Hey guys, Lazy Man here. Hey, this will be part two in installing the 240 rad here at the bottom of the Corsair Obsidian case. And if you missed part one, definitely go back and check that out. I showed how we removed the hard drive brackets from the bottom down here, allowing us now to fit the 240 rad right in there. So anyway, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna lay out uh, for the vent holes here at the bottom and go ahead and cut them out so we can mount the rad. So let me get set up and we'll take a look at that. Hey guys, one thing I wanted to point out here is when you actually do remove the hard drive brackets there, uh, this will actually need to be resupported. You can see it's starting to separate here from the uh, hard drive cage above it. So we'll eventually make a bracket going from, uh, from here down to the bottom to keep that reinforced. Alright guys, I do have the case uh, upside down and it is sitting on the ground so you guys can see what we're doing here. And anyway, what we need to do now is lay out where we're going to make our cutout. And what we want to do is be able to transfer you know, the outside perimeter of the rad along with the screw holes to the bottom of the case here. And now there's several ways that you can do that. Uh, the first being you can get a rad grill and use that as a template. Um, or I know MNPC Tech does sell some laser cutout templates uh, that are, you know, that would work really well. But if you're like me and you waited to the last minute and you didn't order those, you know, you need to do something on the fly. So what I decided to do was just take a piece of white paper, just plain white paper here, and laid that over the top. And some of you guys probably know this trick. Uh, for the ones that don't, you'll find this uh, a pretty easy way to do it. But you'll probably want to tape that paper down so it doesn't move. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to hold it there. And what you want to do is take a regular pencil, something with a long lead on it. And let me see if I can show you this. And then you just want to start rubbing the pencil up against the paper and it will transfer the actual outline of the rad. And as you can see here, as I go over that, it actually shows me where the screw holes are going to be. You know, and you just continue doing that all the way around. And then what you'll end up with is something like this. And then what I did here, just to make these, these holes here, is I took a, just a regular quarter inch punch. You can use 3 16th or quarter inch and then just punch those holes out. So once you get the paper one, then what I wanted, what I suggest doing is taking that and transferring it to something a little more uh, sturdy. And you know, this is just regular construction paper and uh, did the same thing there. Use this as a template, transfer it to there and then cut this out. And then always you want to check to make sure that everything lines up. And mine lines up pretty, pretty good there. So anyway, we're going to use that to get our layout here on the bottom of the case. And because the steel is perforated here, what I need to do is I need to line up these two back holes with one of the holes on the, you know, the perforated steel there. And what we'll do here is we'll actually use some washers to give the screws a little more to grab onto. So anyway, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and tape this off with blue painter's tape. Then I'll set this on here and we'll, uh, we'll trace it and then we'll start cutting. All right? All right, guys, as you can see, I went ahead and got the uh, template uh, squared up on the bottom of the case. I went ahead and taped it down so it didn't move. And, you know, it's not critical, but you may want to get a square and double check to make sure that, you know, you have that on square. So anyway, uh, my plan was, well, let's go ahead and move this real quick. And what I did is, uh, I did trace the outside of it more just for a reference. And this section here, I'm debating if I just want to cut this out in one large cutout or make this two separate cutouts. So as we, as we get to there, we'll, you know, I'll cross that again, cross that bridge when I get to it. But originally what I was going to do was just use a hole saw to cut these round corners, as you can see right here. And I was just going to, you know, drill there, drill there, you know, I would drill out all these and then use my Dremel to actually uh, connect the, the circles. But anyway, after looking at this, what I think I'm going to do instead now, 
Um, and so I'm going to cut these off because they're going to go away anyway. Make this flush and then I think I'm just going to use my jigsaw and go ahead and cut this. Of course we'll have to use the Dremel to, to start the hole. But first we're going to go ahead and drill out these other six holes. Or what is it? Yeah, six holes. As you can see I left these two here. I didn't cover them up with tape because that was my guide is where I wanted to set this template. So anyway, let me go ahead and set up the drill and we'll uh, see how this goes. All right, the first thing we'd like to do before we actually start drilling these holes is take a center punch and go ahead and punch the center of these holes. Uh, this will help to prevent the drill bit from traveling on you. And then another thing I suggest that you do is even though we're drilling quarter inch holes here, I like to use a smaller bit as a pilot hole. And in this case, it's the 16th inch bit. And we'll go ahead and start drilling these out. Now, you, you need to be careful because with a smaller bit like this, if you don't drill straight, you know, you, you can risk the ch chance of breaking the bit. So here we go. So I'm going to start off slow. Let's get that started. And then I'll pick up speed. Okay, now that we have all the holes drilled out with the pilot bit, let's just go ahead and uh, we'll go right to the quarter inch bit and finish drilling these out. So again, you want to start off slow and then put uh, even pressure on it. All right, now that we got all those drilled out, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a uh, Dremel. We'll make an incision here somewhere, and then we'll uh, use a skill saw to cut out the rest of the interior. All right, all right. As you can see, I went ahead and I cut off these two stops here, and these were actually there because uh, there's a bottom filter that goes on the Corsair Obsidian, and this actually was the stops for them. But as you can see, they're in the way of our are rad so we're gonna have to they're gonna be gone anyway so I cut them off just so I'd have a flat surface here uh, so I could use my skill saw to cut this now when we get to this area here we have these two things here these are guides for the filter and we'll have to deal with that when we get there but anyway first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut an incision um, so we can use our skill saw and you can do this one or two ways I mean you can use a skill saw which will give us these nice curved corners where it allow me to put U-channel on it. Um, I have seen people actually just cut this out square, you know, using a Dremel. But I think it looks cleaner, and this is just my personal opinion, if you make curved corners, and either, again, by using a hole saw to drill the holes first for all four corners, and then connecting them with the skill saw, or, I mean, the skill saw, with the jigsaw, or the Dremel. Um, or just using the jigsaw to cut those corners. And I think that's the way we're gonna go is with just the jigsaw. So anyway, we'll go ahead and make an incision here. It's not like a doctor, huh, an incision? <laughs> All right, and then we'll make one over here. Well, actually, we don't need one. We're gonna use this hole there to get started. All right guys, I went ahead and got the jigsaw out. Uh, we're using a Bosch jigsaw, and the blades I'm using, if I can show this, uh, these are 17 to 24 teeth per inch, and these are designed to actually make curved cuts. I don't know if you can see that there. So anyway, we're gonna give this a try, 
if these these corners are a little sharper than I'd like so if I can't go around these corners with this blade then either what we'll do is we'll go halfway around and we'll make another incision here with the Dremel and come back this way and connect it and then if I still don't feel I can make a nice clean cut then we're gonna go back to the hole saw method so anyway let's give this a try Now I'm trying to keep my head out of the way so you guys can see, so if my head gets in the way, I apologize. All right, that, that actually cuts pretty good, but what I've realized is trying to get back around and getting back straight to save this metal here, it's a little more difficult, and you can see that this rattled pretty good. So what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna go ahead and cut that out so I'll continue cutting we'll probably just make a rough cut right here I don't know if you guys can see that we'll go ahead and just make a rough cut here and then eventually we'll square that back up on that line but you can see how the blade you know I can get around the corner but trying to get square again with that line was a little more difficult than uh, you know it's, just, it's because this is there's nothing supporting this I believe if I had some support underneath it, I could do it, but no big deal. We'll just get rid of that. All right. Anyway, well, I'm going to go ahead and cut the whole thing out, and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it when I'm done. All right. All right, guys, I thought I'd show you when I get to this edge over here. Um, again, because this was so flimsy right here, it was just too hard to make that turn. And we'll show you how we make the turn here where it's a little more, uh, a little more stout. All right, guys, you can see that it cuts pretty well around the corners. Um, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and cut some of this out. When I get to getting around here and we have to deal with these, these two uh, guides that are actually rising above the bottom of the case, um, I'll pick it up there and see what we come up with. All right? All right, guys, here's what I've come up with. You know, I have some of these uh, oak strips that I had laying around from a wood project that I'm working on and they actually sit up just a little bit higher than these guides for the uh, filters so I'm thinking by using them I can stay above it and as I come across I'll be able to rest on these here so we'll see how this goes I'm going to finish the cut from this side here. Left handed even. There we go. Alright, there we have it. So let me go ahead and I'll get all the wood off and then we'll peel the tape back. We'll see how the cut turned out. Of course there's going to be some cleanup with the file but we'll take an initial look at the uh, how it turned out just from the jigsaw, all right? All right, let's get the tape off and see how it looks. So anyway, you can see it can be done. You just gotta take your time. Uh, go very slow with the uh, jigsaw. I mean, the jigsaw is, is not gonna drag you along. I mean, you're gonna be able to control how fast you go, and you know when you go around those turns, you definitely wanna go slow, and. Just make sure you're turning it 
as you're going. All right, let me take the camera off the tripod and we'll get a closer look at it. All right, guys, there we have it. I think it turned out pretty good. So let's just get a closer look and we'll see. But I think the jigsaw did a pretty good job. I think it did a better job than had I used hole saws and the Dremel because trying to, after you drill a circle here with the hole saw, then trying to line up a straight line, sometimes you know you might be off a little bit. So these are nice straight lines, uh, nice clean cuts. So I think it turned out pretty good. So anyway, I think what we'll do now is we're going to go ahead, I mean, you can see that it's nice and smooth. Um, probably doesn't even need U-channel on it. But I'm going to go ahead and put U-channel on it anyway. We'll see how it works around this corner here. And then uh, we'll mount the radiator and we'll see how, it, how the final product looks. Alright guys, here it is with the U-channel. So, you know, it does clean it up a little bit. It was a pretty good cut, but I think the U channel actually finishes it off. You know, it was a little, you know, originally my plan was to make this a turn and have a piece of metal going across here, and the U channel would have went on a lot better. But I did go around this pretty good. Took a little persuasion, you know, a little super glue to hold it in place, but uh, I think it turned out pretty good. Alright, let's just take a look at it with the Radden now. Alright guys, there's a final shot of the bottom and what we're eventually going to do is we'll put a magnetic uh, filter over the bottom of this but temporarily I use these M4 by 10 millimeter uh, socket head cap screws and I will be changing these out for you know some flush mount screws such as this one here but this is a 632 and we need M4 so that's something to be uh, aware about when you install these these rads is this 240 rad by XSPC uses M4 screws and their 360 of the same manufacturer uses 632 I don't understand why but uh, you know I just found that out I assumed they were both 632 I had those screws uh, especially for the bottom of this it's a good thing I have uh, a bunch of M4 of different sizes so that's it. Alright guys, this is Lazy Man and uh, until next time.